Hello and welcome to a tutorial video on the Yamaha Piagero NPV80. This is a very fun instrument to play and uh, it has a lot of nice sounding voices in it. And today in part one we are going to go over some of the basics uh, fairly quickly and then get into some more complex things and then in part two I'm going to show you how to store sounds and set up the piano so that it can be played in a extremely uh, expressive way. So what I'm going to show you at first is, is I've got uh, I've got this I've got the Piagero programmed under the under these banks, and I'm going to show you what it sound what it can sound like if you go ahead and pre-program, and and have it all work together. So I'm going to do a little demo here. And that's using pre-programmed information into this into the piano into the uh, calling it a piano but it's not really a synthesizer because we can't edit the sounds 
you can take sounds, layer them, and you can take sounds and split them and kind of make your own sounds that way. But as far as editing sounds, you cannot do that. So this is what you would call a sample playback synth or a sample playback piano or a sample playback instrument. So in part one, we're going to go over the basics really quick, get into some of the uh, more in-depth uh, parts that are behind the panels here, and then I'm going to show you how to pre-program what I just played. We'll go through and we'll build up these programs, we'll store them, and, and we'll play it, and I'll show you actually how to record the whole thing also. So in part one, we're going to start with our grand piano button. When you hit this button, it resets the piano back to the zero zero one live grand piano. It also resets a lot of other things. So the idea Yamaha had when they made this is that you can go ahead and move things around, add reverb, put splits in, add your dual layer or dual sounds together. And if you get lost, all you have to do is hit Grand Piano and you always come back. You always come back to the same settings. Now there are some settings you can make that are permanent and uh, will stay with it when you turn it off, turn it on, and, uh, and pre-program and everything else. And we're going to go into that last on this part one. So we're going to start with just plain navigation. So navigation is, when you turn this to and hit the grand piano patch, you'll see Live G Piano or Live Grand Piano 001. 001 is the name of the patch. A patch is, a, uh, is an old term coming from synthesizers because they use the word patch because they took cables, plugged them in to these modular synths and made sounds by connecting all the modules together. They modified the sounds. So this is a grand piano patch 001. Yamaha is calling the name of the instrument. This is piano. It's calling it a voice. And, and the accompaniment is called a style. So to navigate the voices, you can go to the data dial here and just spin it and you can go through all 500 of them. And there's 500 in there. And it doesn't take too long to spin your way through. So, so if you know what the number is, you can spin to it pretty fast. That's, that's one way you can navigate. Another way you can navigate is in the keypad to the right of the wheel are yes and no. And yes, yes is a plus and minus and no is a minus also. So you can step step through each tone with each of a button push and the yes goes up and the no goes down one step and as you see as the number changes below it as as the name changes that's just the number name of the patch but that also means you can use this keypad over here and go if you know the number, you can go straight to it. So instead of going through 373 tones, I can just type in 373 and get this tone. And at any time, I hit Grand Piano. I'm always back at Grand Piano. And now the third way to navigate 
is to the left of the data dial, this, the round dial, is called category, and there's two buttons underneath category. And as I go use the top button, it goes from live piano, which is acoustic piano, goes to electric piano, then organs, sorted instruments, guitar, bass, live orchestras, choirs, and tenor trombone or tenor uh, sax, trumpet, brass, go to it steps through uh, categories and you'll find a lot of overlapping categories in here. When you get, get the square lead, these are the synth tones, and as you get to that category you can step through them one at a time. And then go back to categories, go into vibes, and then the drum kits. Now back to piano again, but not the same piano. This is this is patch number 140. This is a different piano. As I scroll through, there's all kinds of different pianos in there. Then we, we have this uh, next category, which is kind of like hitty. Instruments that make tones when you hit them, like like a vibraphone. And then it goes into organs again. And then uh, goes back into guitar. So there's repeats in here, but they're different sounding uh, instruments. Even though this is a guitar 215, it's different from the guitars back here. that start at 37. So as you go through the categories, you have to get kind of used to what's actually in there. This one started out with a violin. It's got violins, viola, cello. So this 270 or so. And then we go to str different strings again. So we got a lot of orchestras on that category. Next category is, it's got a trumpet, but it's also got a warm trumpet. It's got a trombone too. Tuba, muted, French horns. So each category gets confusing and there's 500 sounds. So you, you have to get, you have to step through them and get to know the category jumps that take you to this. Like this is a new age pad so so this is basically pads and I'm on, uh, to I'm on uh, patch 369 So you got the choice of three or four different ways of going through. Hit the grand piano button and end up on 001 again.
So you can scroll the wheel, you can type in the, the number you want to go to and go to it straight off. You can step through them one at a time with the yes, no buttons. Or you can go through that category jumps and then explore what's inside that category. So whichever way you pick, uh, it's, uh, it's not the most organized, so you're going to have to get used to the way that they organized it because you can't do much about it. And that's how you choose your full sound. These sounds go, this is one, one tone, one voice that goes across the entire keyboard. So the next thing we do is we have a choice of combining two of them together. You can combine two together. You can split, put one on the left, one on the right, such as bass and piano. You can layer them together, such as putting strings together with the piano. Or you can actually have three voices going at the same time by using the, by using the dual layer and combining two layers together in the right hand using the split and having a separate left hand. So you can layer two, but you can actually have three voices going at the same time. So let's start with the uh, layer. So there's, a, there's strings layered with the piano. So I turn that off and turn, turn on the split. There's the split. There's a bass. That's where the piano starts. So there we got a split. And you, like I said, you can have up to three. So if I turn on the split and the layer, I can get my strings and piano. And I have a bass in my left hand. Now we can control what we, what uh, tones we split with, and when, uh, and where where the split is, and I'm going to go into that now. So I'm going to turn these both off. And at any time you hit this grand piano, no matter what you got set in the piano or what whatever you've got set up and fine tuned, whenever you hit that, it all erases and goes back to the regular piano. So in part two, I'm going to show you how to store it so that you can go back to your favorite programmed settings. And you can program, like I played at the beginning, you can program an entire orchestrations that go through different instruments and everything else. That way you can use the full power of this keyboard. So let's go with the layer. And we're going to do the dual layer. So I got my piano voice 001. I hit dual layer. And I automatically get strings. Well, maybe I don't want strings. So I'm going to hold down the dual layer button until it says D voice. It's reading D voice. Now it tells me it's strings 056. So 056 patch for strings is what's been layered with my piano. So to change that, I can use the data wheel and pick up something else. I'm going to put a choir back there. So now I chose 068 as a choir. Now we can fine tune these, uh, this dual layer by going to the category buttons. And the category buttons, instead of while you're in the edit mode, and that's when you push down, that's what we're in. We're in the edit mode of the dual layer. And that's by holding the button down. Make sure the dual voice comes on here. There's a, there's a, the screen tells you the dual voice is on. And then now it's showing choir 68 is my second voice. Now the category buttons will scroll through the different options. So the first one is the dual voice volume. Now I've changed the volume of this second voice, and I hit this again, 
Now I can change the octave plus or minus two octaves. I can change the panning whether in stereo, whether it's the this voice is left or right or center. And I can put reverb on just the dual voice, not the piano voice. So I'm going to put the reverb into that. So now there's a whole bunch of reverb on the choir voice, but the piano has remained the same. And you can also add a chorus. So now we have a... So now we've just programmed our a custom dual layer or dual voice. It's called dual or D. We now have a custom one. Where by default you're going to get those strings at that volume level and at that octave. So say I want to add or say I don't want the, I'm going to move to I just changed it to a 119 bell pad. with that gives us a whole different effect and again I'm going to change the octave this time by changing the octave you get a whole different feeling of this <clears throat> of the dual voice with this that's two octaves up, here's two octaves down. So I've gone from bright to dark because I'm two octaves down. Now if I wanted to keep this if I liked what I programmed here I would have to go to the program banks and save it. And that's going to be in part two. We're going to build up an entire program bank. And I'm going to show you how you can play from bank to from uh, registration number to registration number, all in rhythm, all without a break, just like I did at the beginning of this video. So we're not going to store this one. So if I go to my voice button and I change it to a harpsichord, I changed my voice to a harpsichord and at the same time I lost all that programming we did with the dual voice. That's how this keyboard works. As soon as I change a voice everything just disappears and you have to reprogram. So that's good in a way because you, you, you don't get lost and it's good because you can store those if you really want to. Because there's, going to, there's eight banks with four registrations per bank. So there's 32 places to store your setups. And of course, if you plug this piano USB into your computer, you can store, uh, store and recall as many as you want. You know, thousands, millions, whatever. So that might be the confusing part people are having with this piano. Every time you hit piano or something, you know, 
well, what happened to all that stuff I programmed? Well, it's, it's gone. It's gone unless you actually save it. So if I just, once you get used to it, you go, okay, I'm going to add my dual layer. I'm going to hold down my dual layer button, and it defaults back to this zip 56 strings. And I'm going to just immediately type in 373, hit my category button, turn up my volume to 100, turn my octave, uh, leave my octave alone, and uh, call that done. So there in just a few seconds I've, I've already programmed uh, a dual layer voice with a, uh, uh, the second voice was 373 Itopia. So I have a 373 Itopia over the top of the piano. So you go back to voice and it says live piano so that's my main main and then I got the dual voice over it. I go, I don't want that live piano, I want an electric piano. So I go to my electric piano. I go, wait a minute, I lost my dual voice. And as you can see it dis disappears from here. Again, you change the you change the main voice, you erase everything. So it's important to pick your main voice first, then add your layer. So I turn on my dual voice. Uh, the dual voice is 009. I'm going to type in 373. Go to my category button, hit the top button, turn my volume up. And there I've just set up a main voice with 10 called the Cool SCEP. It's an electric piano. Cool electric piano. And I just created a whole new sound that maybe nobody else tried by combining this cool electric piano with number 373 I, uh, with the dual voice Itopia 373 and then I further edited the layer by going changing the volume this time let's change the octave and make this a darker tone by going two octaves down Now let's go two octaves up. So even though I got the same dual voice in there that uh, same dual voice, 373 Itopia, just changing the octave that it's running at, just changes the total feeling of the combined two voices and back down to the normal octave. And that's some of the ways. Now, again, I can go through here and the dual voice, the reverb set very low. I can turn that up and really put some reverb to that and that's how we get the 
some more original kind of sounds out of this keyboard by combining the dual voices. And of course you can always turn on the... Now we got three voices. We got the dual voice on the right hand. And we have a split bass on the left. And there's the split. And the editing for the split is the same as the as the uh, dual voice. Hold the split button down, comes up by default, it's going to be this number 47 figure bass. You can scroll this thing and get anything you want in there. So if we could almost, we could actually do this in reverse. By So I put a cello in there. Change the octave. Change the reverb. And then add the dual layer voice with the right hand. And that's the way to get three voices going at the same time. And that's pretty much the, the functions of dual layer, dual voices, and split voices. Now you can set the, set the split point. So let's, let's go into split voice and let's change Okay, so I'm going to choose my main voice first, and I'm going to pick an organ. And in the split voice, turn the split voice on, hold it down. By default, it's going to be 47 finger bass. So, you don't want that. If you don't want that, again, you use the uh, thing and use the dial and find yourself another, another split. So the split doesn't have to be a bass, the split can be, you know, strings. So that's kind of dark. Let's, um, let's bring the strings up one octave. Now the strings are overpowering the organ, so let's bring the let's bring the split volume down. Let's add some reverb to the strings.
I think you're getting the idea of how creative you can get with these, uh, with the splits and the layering now. And that's a way to get this keyboard to sound more like your own, add your own sounds. And there's a lot of sounds to pick from out of that 500. There are a lot of repeats that look like repeats, but they're slightly different. I mean, slightly different trumpets, slightly different trombones. Now at any time, I went back to grand piano, everything's reset, all the split layers and everything, all that's gone. Again, part two where I'm going to show you how to store those and how to use those. So let's pick a main voice again. Let's try a let's try a synth voice here. So I got to the square lead at 107. Now there's So let's uh, let's explore the arpeggiator. Turn the arpeggiator on. Turns red. Play a chord. And the arpeggiator is playing arpeggios for you. Now that could be. Those are in set two the metronome and to the tempo that's set. So your tempo button over here, when the tempo's on here, it's saying it's 118. <clears throat> so we can slow that down. Let's go from 118 to 60. And I'm gonna speed that up to 100 now. Now just like the editing on the <clears throat> on the dual layer and the split, the editing on the arpeggio is the same way. Hold the button down until it says arp type. And now we can pick from 50 different arpeggios that are built into this. And you can you can do that with any any voice that you select. You can even do it in the drum category. So here, here we got bongos. So I turn this on. And the pigeon type is rock. I can change that to club. I can get kind of, when I have a drum voice selected, I can get, I can use a pedal to actually make drum beats. Okay, that takes care of voice. Now with style, we have 167 styles. 
and they are either drum accompaniments or drum and full orchestration accompaniments, which includes uh, bass and some rhythm instruments. And I think everybody pretty much knows how to use that. I'm going to go over it real quick anyway to show you some of the features that you can use and, uh, and basically how it functions. So we're going to pick our grand piano and our style. I'm going to pick 001. I'm going to just go ahead and type it right in here. And it's our standard 8 beat. And down here we can add the accompaniment. If you hit that, you'll see it light up here. Auto accompaniment. And if we hit the start now, as soon as I play my first chord, and there we got the full accompaniment. Now we can we also have two different styles per style. By hitting the auto fill, it changes from A to B. You get a fill and then a slightly different B. And you also get a different accompaniment. So while you're playing along, you can, uh, it's less boring by switching, but you also can hit the button twice and it won't switch from uh, uh, rhythm A to rhythm B, it'll, it'll just put the fill in there. And then we can use all of the features to put a start-finish in there the fills and the start and a start sync in there. So let's do the full feature of what we have here. So we're going to use the intro button. As soon as you hit intro, it'll say intro. And then there's an arrow that says B. That means it's going to go into the B version of this of this particular style. If you don't want it to go into the B, hit the auto fill and it'll toggle back to the A. So now it's going to do the intro going to the A style and um, it'll, it'll start on time if I hit this sync start. If I hit sync start I get a flashing arrows at the bottom. Now when I hit my first chord it'll go into the intro. Now your first chord should reflect the pretty much the bass uh, root note of your song. If I pick you know it can the the Piagero will detect whether it's a minor or a major chord and which key it's in. So if I hit a C major, it'll do an intro in C major. If I hit a C minor, it'll do an intro in C minor. If I D major, it'll do, it'll, it'll do the intro in D major. If I do a C minor 7th, it'll still do the C minor. So let's do a C minor 7th and get this started. See the intro counting down here.
playing on a C minor. So when I So the keyboard ends on a C minor. Now if I had done all of this and started on a F major, it's a, the intro is going to sound different. So it's doing an F major key now. So that's nice that the uh, intro and and, uh, and exits or intro and endings are in tune to whatever whatever chord you're playing. Now there's some basic setups in this under function. If you hit the function key, now the category buttons are going to step through the functions. The top one goes forward bottom one goes backwards. So as we step through these, we see all kinds of different things in here. But what we're looking for basically you can set your metronome volumes there's a lot of things in here there's a, there's a style volume, there's a transpose, transpose is in half steps or in semitone steps, and there's also a tuning where you can fine tune this to anything. Here we've got our split point. You can set the different split points for your for your um, for your split layer. And we have touch sensitivity. This is something that stays with the keyboard when it's turned off. And we have four different settings. We got a soft setting where it doesn't take much pressure to go from soft. I don't have to hit the keys very hard to go from soft to loud. And then there's a medium. And then a hard setting, where you got to hit the keys as hard as you would almost a regular piano to get it. And then there's an off setting, where no matter how hard you hit the keys, it's always the same volume. This is what's called velocity. That setting will stay with the keyboard. Most of these settings uh, will not, or at least half of them will not. Um, any of the settings that change reverb, chorus, um, octaves, all those settings we were making in there, those are not permanent settings that stay with the keyboard when it's turned on and off or as you switch through tones. Those are settings that need to be saved in these banks, and that'll be part two of this video, is saving the banks. Now, I have full keyboard up here. The full keyboard function or multi one or two or full key. I always use full keyboard so no matter where on this keyboard I play a chord the audio accompaniment will follow. So this is a this is for the intermediate player this isn't the more simple chord function. This is for the actual mus musician out there. No matter what chord I play on any range of the keyboard, the accompaniment will follow. So I have full keyboard set on mine. That's another permanent setting that stays with it. You have a master volume that I, th I think is always at 121. A master octave. It goes plus or minus two octaves up, two octaves down. You have a master pan. With the pan, if you if you got a dual voice, you can put one voice more in the left and one in the right as a stereo image. We're not going to get too much into that, but you do have that option to put it all in the right. 
So you have varying degrees of how far it can be, the main voice can, can be left or right. And that would be combined with your, your dual voice or your, or, your, uh, or your split voice. You might want to split it and put a more of a stereo effect in there instead of having, having them in the center. Then you have the main reverb. That will reset every time. I can, I can set this up to a maximum here. I got a big reverb in there, but as soon as I hit my grand piano, it's gone. So if I go, go back to 08, that's one of the, like I said, you have to get used to what, uh, what resets and what doesn't, but it's, it's fairly logical, but you cannot set up a master reverb uh, for the piano and, and, uh, and have it saved. The only way you can, like I said, when we program this, it has to be saved into the banks to be permanent. So when it's turned on and turned off, or you change tones, it stays with the piano. We have a master chorus, and then we get into the dual voice that we've been into, split voice, reverbs and chorus, and we have um, we have a sustain that you can turn on permanently. Very little use for that. I'm, some people may find a use for that, but that's going to be off most of the time because you can use your sustain pedal to do the same thing. You should have a sustain pedal on here to get all the control that you need from this keyboard. Uh, we have a master EQ where you have choices of line outs, headphone outs, speaker out. So I'm recording this into my into my uh, high-end recorder. I'm not recording the speakers. So I'm using a line out to equalization. And we have quantize and uh, all sorts of PC. I'm not going to go into all of these things that are in here. There's a lot of things under the function, under this function button. But for today we're dealing with the functions of the uh, fine fine-tuning or editing our dual layer and our split layers and our arpeggio types. Okay, so we know how to find sounds different ways. We know how to layer and edit the layers. We know how to add a split and we know how to edit the split. The only thing we haven't done is the split point. So let's put a split in there. There's the split. So we're going to hold down our split key and we're going to use the category to step through. We got split volume, split octave, split pan, split reverb, split chorus. Now we got a, unfortunately the split point is not part of or next to the others. So we got to step through until we see split. Stepping through, stepping through. Split point, which says split PNT, split point, and it says 064. And the little keyboard on the display, you can you can see where the split is. So use your dial. If you use your dial, you can see how the split changes. So if we want the split, let's say we want the split to end right here. I'm going to dial down. That's a piano. There's the bass. So the next key is piano now. So I just changed my split point to a 059, which means middle C, and anything below middle C is bass. And everything above middle C. piano. 